Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel for a car review. We are kicking it off strong with another classic Cadillac. Today, we have a 1975 Sedan DeVille to review. I'm very excited to show you guys this particular car. It's absolutely beautiful and in mint condition. Before we get started, I would like to thank all of you who have subscribed for subscribing. We are inching closer to 10,000 subscribers, which is a massive number. However, only about 5% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you could subscribe, it would be a huge help. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Also, I have a major channel announcement to make. I now have merchandise. If you're interested, you can click on the link in the description below. And if you're in need of a new hat, jacket, or shirt, you can find it all right there. Also on this website is a lot of General Motors merchandise. There is apparel for all of GM's car brands, including all of the classic brands as well. It's all very nice stuff. Also in the description below are links to gmcarclubs.org as well as the Cadillac LaSalle Club. These groups are full of people who are interested in these enthusiast cars and want to keep excitement around these vehicles alive. So if you'd like to, you can feel free to join those groups. Now, without further ado, Let's begin with the review. So, starting off the review of the Sedan DeVille by taking a look at the front end of the car. Being a 1975 model year, it did have several changes compared to 1974. Firstly, this car did come with squared off headlights and cornering lights. The older models would have had rounded headlights rather than these squared ones. Also, the front fenders on this car is more squared off compared to 1974. So the design of this car got more squared off and blocky, which was kind of something that stayed with the Cadillac brand for uh, at least a decade well into the 80s. And unsurprisingly, we do have the Cadillac badge up front. It is not a hood ornament, which I personally would have preferred because I like hood ornaments from this time. However, it is nice it does have the Cadillac badge there, as well as a V, which is something that Cadillac has continued on into its modern vehicles. Also for 1975, Cadillac added the Cadillac script onto the front of the grille here, and they did change the design of the grille slightly. It all looks very nice, very bold, and I think it fits the style of this car very well. There are also several special things to mention up here at the front. Firstly, there are some front fender lamp monitors here on the front of the Sedan DeVille. These are very special because they would tell you if your high beams, your headlights, or your turn signals are functioning properly. Essentially, it used fiber optic cables which would run from the headlights all the way up here to the fender where the driver can see them at nighttime and they will know if their lights are working. And if you take a look behind the cornering lights on either side of the car, there is an old Cadillac logo within the orange reflector on the side of the car. This is actually the logo from Cadillacs from the 1940s. Very special and it's cool that Cadillac was paying attention to the heritage even back in the mid 70s. Now at the side of the Sedan DeVille, although this isn't the biggest car that Cadillac built at the time, the Fleetwood or Series 75 would have been longer, this is still a massive automobile. It's about 231 inches long and it definitely looks it. It's absolutely massive, but that's what we love about these classic Cadillacs. And one of the reasons why the Sedan DeVille still looks so massive is because it has different design elements that help to accentuate the length of the car, including this small piece of chrome that runs all the way from from the front fender to the tip of the back fender. There are other lines and pieces of chrome that do the same thing. It just helps to make the car look absolutely massively long, which I very much like. Now, a few things to point out here. We do have a power antenna on the front fender. Both of the front doors on this car have their own locks and keyholes, which is very handy. This was also the first year where power door locks became a standard feature on Cadillacs. This car also has chrome door guards to help protect the door if you swing it into the car beside you, which is very nice. And one of my favorite design elements at the side of the car is that there is no B pillar on this vehicle. As you can see, there is nothing in between the front and rear windows. It makes for a very cool open air experience when all the windows are down. It is unfortunate that most modern cars no longer have this design trend, probably due to safety regulations, but it's cool that this car does not have the B pillar. And behind the rear doors is a window in the C-pillar. Apparently this was a new design for 1975, and it's kind of within the vinyl top on this car. And also regarding the length of this vehicle, 
if a Cadillac buyer in 1975 didn't want to have a four-door sedan that was still this large, they could have opted for the Coupe de Ville, which was a two-door version of this car. A little bit shorter, maybe a little bit less practical, but for some people it would have been a better option. And the sales figures do show that these were practical and good choices for people because Cadillac regularly sold over 100,000 vehicles of these each year, which is pretty amazing to think about, which is almost as much as uh, how many cars Cadillac sells in the US today. Now moving along to the back of the Sedan DeVille, we find more Cadillac script on the back trunk of the car, as well as the script Sedan DeVille on the rear fender. And there is a Cadillac logo here, along with another chrome V right beneath it, as well as a large chrome rear bumper. Very much fits the front end design of this vehicle. And the Sedan DeVille also does have fins at the back of the car. These lights in here do light up so you can see them at nighttime. One of my favorite Cadillac design elements right there. And when you need to fill up this behemoth, which would probably be quite often because you won't get good gas mileage, you actually lift up the rear license plate to get access to the gas tank. This is something that a lot of classic automobiles had at this time, but you basically will never find that in any modern car, just probably due to safety regulations, but it is really cool to see that on this vehicle. And once you're ready to get inside of the trunk of the Sedan DeVille, all you have to do is push the Cadillac crest off to the side, which reveals the keyhole. Once you put the key in, you twist, and the trunk reveals itself and opens like so. Now, of course, because this car is so large, you do get a very massive trunk to come with it. You can fit so much stuff in here, probably all the suitcases you need for your entire family. There is a nice spare tire here as well as the jack. So if you get a flat tire, which was very common back in the day, you can use that to uh, continue on your journey. On the top of the trunk, there are stickers here, one of which is to tell you how to use the jack in the car. And once you're done with the trunk, all you have to do is slowly let it down and the trunk does the rest of the work for you. I love the trunk pull down feature. It makes it very luxurious to close your trunk softly rather than having to slam it shut so you don't have to use a lot of hard work. Next, let's take a look underneath the hood of the 1975 Sedan DeVille. Now, of course, being a classic Cadillac, it's absolutely massive. I'm not gonna have to suffer for you all when I open this because it is so heavy. Ugh. But luckily, it's honestly not the worst hood that I've opened up for uh, cars I've reviewed on this channel. Anyways, under here is the 500 cubic inch V8 engine. This is an engine we've seen many times under the hood of many other Cadillacs we've reviewed on this channel, just because it was a standard engine pretty much across Cadillac's lineup in this time period. However, this engine did replace the 472, which was the standard engine in the Sedan DeVille in the early 70s. This 500 cubic inch engine isn't really known for its fuel economy or its power. It only makes about 190 horsepower and 360 pound-feet of torque, and you'd be lucky if you get like 13 or 14 miles per gallon. And the reason for this is because of the strict environmental regulations that were put on General Motors and other car companies at the time because of the oil crisis in the early 1970s. However, this car isn't built to be sporty or economical, so this engine is still a very good fit for this model. Next, let's start up the 500 cubic inch V8 and hear how it sounds. Before we take a look at the interior of the Sedan DeVille, let's go ahead and take a look at the keys that came with the vehicle. Now, just like most classic General Motors vehicles, this came with square and round keys. The square one being used to start the car, while the round key is used to unlock the doors or lock the doors, as well as open the trunk. And these keys are attached to this really nice looking uh, a key holder from uh, back in the day. I'm guessing this isn't original to the car, but it's cool to see these classic keys with the Sedan DeVille. Now that we've taken a look at the exterior of the Sedan DeVille, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside.
Taking a look at the interior of the Sedan DeVille, I am truly in love with the design and the colors in here. I really love the red leather that is everywhere on the door panels, the red leather seats, which really matches the exterior color of this car to a T. I also am a fan of the wood in the interior. I do like the simple designs on the door panel as well as on the dashboard. There are metal accents here and there, so it's a really nice blend of everything that I just love about classic Cadillac interiors. Although it could be nicer as far as the fit and finish goes, I still do very much love the looks. And probably my favorite thing about getting into the Sedan DeVille is that you have to step over this really beautiful looking metal sill plate, which says interior by Fleetwood and body by Fisher. So it's really cool that Cadillac still had a relationship with Fisher body and put it on their cars in a very cool and interesting way. All right, let's get inside of the Sedan DeVille and see how comfortable it is. Oh. Yes. <laughs> now on the inside of the Sedan DeVille, I can tell that it's been a little while since I've uh, had a classic car on this channel because these seats are beyond comfortable. They're just so soft, so nice to sit in. And I feel very relaxed already. And I haven't even started driving yet. It's just so nice. But what is really nice regarding the comfort inside of here is that we do have dual powered seats for the front driver and passengers. Typically the Sedan DeVille would come with a three person bench seat for those up front. However, this car was optioned with two six-way power adjustable front seats. But the good thing is that you still can fit three people up here. All you have to do is lift up the center armrest and there's a seat belt there for a third person. So you don't lose any practicality by having these seats. And the controls for this seat is down here by my left thigh. You can move the seat forwards, backwards, up and down, however you please. There are also more controls here on the door panel, which includes controls for the power windows, door locks and window locks, as well as a lever to adjust the driver's side mirror. However, something you may have noticed already is that there is no passenger side mirror on this car. I'm sure that was an option, but this one did not come with it. And it's very strange to me. I've never been inside of a car without a passenger side mirror. So it's taking a little bit of getting used to. In front of me is the typical three spoke steering wheel you will see on Cadillacs from this era. This one does have the optional tilt and telescopic wheel. Our gear selector is on this wheel as well as our stock for the turn signals as well as the cruise control, which is handy. This car also came with delay wipers as well as twilight sentinel and auto dimming, which is a very cool feature. And being a Cadillac, this car did come with climate control. So you have both air conditioning and heat. And as far as the gauges go, there really isn't a whole lot. And that's typical once again of Cadillacs from this time. There's a speedometer here, our odometer and tripometer. And in the top left is our fuel gauge, which has a little warning light in there to tell you when you're about to run out of fuel. And kind of a funny option that this car has for the time is the fuel economy monitor. This actually has a light in the dashboard which will glow orange when you accelerate the car a little bit too hard and you're getting poor fuel economy. But it's funny that it's just a little orange circle that glows. Whereas in other Cadillacs I've shown you guys on the channel, it's actually been an economy light where it reads economy in orange. But this one's just a little different being from 1975. And possibly my favorite thing about this interior is in the center of the dashboard and that is the clock. However, the clock actually works. As you can see, the seconds hand is slowly turning around, which will eventually cause the minute hand to move and so on and so forth. It is so cool to see this working because almost every single time I either step into or see one of these Cadillacs from this era, this clock is almost always broken and I never get to see it in use. I'm just absolutely in love with it. And this car also came with an eight track player. If you push in the top of the radio, you can see there is a hole there. That is where the eight track tape would be inserted. And the radio also has several different presets here. It also has AM and FM. You can also adjust the balance and the fade of the music as well if you wanted to. And just like many of the other Cadillacs I showed you guys, this car does come with a little map light which can be turned on with the switch on the bottom of the dashboard. The Cadillac script also makes an appearance on the dashboard as well as the name DeVille and with the Cadillac badge in the middle of the wood there. Above me are several sun visors. The driver's side one does not have a mirror, but maybe Cadillac did this so then drivers would not be distracted, unlike most drivers today. But the passenger side does have a mirror. 
There is also a center mirror and it has a little lever on the bottom which can be adjusted for nighttime driving when someone has high beams on behind you. And being a car from the 70s, this does have a big ashtray in the center of the dashboard so you can smoke all you want while you drive your sedan to Ville. For storage, there is a large glove box which has plenty of space in it for everything you need to put in there. And there is a little slot on the left side of the glove box door which is used for putting the owner's manual into as well as a little yellow button which is to open the trunk out back. And there's a little container in the footwell by the passenger's feet, which you can put smaller items into as well. But overall, pretty much everything up front is almost exactly the same as the 1976 Eldorado I brought to you guys, the 78 Baritz, as well as the Series 75, at least as far as the dashboard goes. So nothing too much surprising here. Now that we've checked out the front seat, let's go ahead and check out the rear. Okay, now in the back seat of the Sedan DeVille, I'm actually quite surprised about how much leg room is in this back seat. I was kind of expecting it to be okay, but this is actually quite good. I can stretch out my legs. I have plenty of room in between my knee and the front seat. So I could really actually sit back here and be extremely comfortable. So I'm really not surprised that many people probably thought, why do I need to get a Fleetwood? There's already enough room back here for passengers to be comfortable, especially if they're kids or smaller adults. I am happy to say that these seats are just as soft and comfortable as the ones up front. There's plenty of room here, a center armrest, which is very nice for comfort. And this armrest can be flipped up and a third person could sit here in the middle if needed. And unsurprisingly, there are metal ashtrays in both of the doors back here. So no one has an excuse to not smoke. They all have access to the ashtray as well as the cigarette lighter. There are also clothes hangers back here, which is very practical, as well as several lights in the C pillar. However, the only unfortunate thing is that I don't think you can turn these lights on manually. The door has to be open for these to turn on, which is a shame. And the most interesting thing back here would be this little piece of plastic above the rear window. Inside of here are more fiber optic cables that lead to the tail lights. These are here to tell the driver if the tail lights and turn signals are working out back. And the driver can get a perfect view of these fiber optic cables by looking through the rear mirror. You can see them turning on and off with the brake lights. But once again, I'm just really impressed with how much space there is back here and how comfortable it is. It truly was unexpected. Now, I was so impressed with just how much legroom there is in the back seat that I came up with a demonstration to show you guys and help visualize just how much room there is. And I uh, hired a man to help me with this. As you can see, there's enough room here to sleep on the floor in the back seat if you really needed to. And actually, my dad isn't the first person to do this. The owner told us that his mom, as a child, would actually sleep on the floor back there on family vacations. So, as you can see, you don't need to get a Fleetwood. You can use a Sedan DeVille and sleep on the floor. Now that we've taken a look at the exterior and the interior of the Sedan DeVille, let's go ahead and take it for a drive. Hey, here we are driving the 1975 Sedan DeVille. And right off the bat, it is just so nice to be back in a classic Cadillac. It feels like this is a home, you know, where you, uh, where you should be. So driving this car around, it's really becoming more and more apparent just how well this car has been taken care of and how well it's been preserved. The owner, his grandfather actually bought this car new and now his grandson owns it. And uh, he's, he's very particular, takes very, very good care of his cars, including this one. And everything really feels mint and perfect as it should be, as if it just rolled off the factory floor. I mean, even this, the little things work really well, like moving the windows up and down. They move very quickly as they should. And at this point, you know, when a car gets to be 50 years old, you know, most people don't do that. Or occasionally you'll find most cars, they just... You know, stuff like that just doesn't work. That guy's giving us a thumbs up. So it's just really cool to get to review a car like this and to experience it uh, very much like how it would have been. You know, the clock is working, the air conditioning works. It's just, it really is just quite, quite nice. And it really is also very easy to drive around. I'm used to driving sometimes bigger, bigger cars than this, including the Series 75, but this car, 
uh, almost as like a sports car as far as the uh, sizing goes. I feel very confident driving it, honestly. Um, the steering is, of course, very loose. It still behaves very much like a uh, Cadillac should from this time period, so no surprises as far as that goes and handling and whatnot. Maneuverability is just, you know, a little bit better than what I uh, even expected, honestly. Okay, everyone, let's do a quick zero to 60 acceleration test. I am honestly not expecting much, especially since I've driven several vehicles with this engine and uh, they didn't exactly perform too well, but that's okay. Let's see what we can do. Oh, automatic visor. <laughs> There's 40. My economy light is on. 50. 60. <laughs> well, it definitely moves and uh, screams a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it's uh, definitely not the quickest accelerating car out there, but for a 45-year-old car that weighs uh, probably about as much as a mountain, it's not too bad. That engine sure does purr nicely, too. I do really enjoy the sound of these old V8 engines, including the uh, 500 cubic inch. And it's really cool that uh, you really do get to see a lot of it as well, just because it was really in pretty much every Cadillac in this time period, so we've gotten to see it multiple times. I guess one of the problems of not having a B-pillar and having just rubber there is that sometimes it's not a perfect seal, especially after about 45 years. <laughs> oh well, it's just a part of owning one of these cars and having them. Here we go, I'm gonna set the cruise control and let the car do the work. <laughs> there really just isn't a sedan out there anymore in the modern world that accomplishes the same things that this sedan does. That isn't the most expensive thing in the world like a uh, S550 or a Rolls Royce or something crazy like that, but a car that's still comfortable, has plenty of room, and I think that's something that a lot of people from this time period would have thought as well, because this really is a good middle ground um, of a car. It's very practical, but it's not uh, something that'll absolutely break the bank as far as uh, uh, expensive Cadillacs go, and that's why I kind of view this car almost as like a a mini Fleetwood, just a Fleetwood that's been shrunken down into just a little bit of a smaller package, and it's uh, a, a better fit for most people. Not something that they want to have a huge brash car with all the features possible, extremely expensive. The Sedan DeVille would have been a good option for people with families and who wanted to travel. And I guess that goes to show just why the Sedan DeVille was such a popular model, because it also had the coupe version. So it's just really an all around very usable and a good vehicle for most people. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I certainly had a lot of fun driving this car around today and uh, getting to experience the Sedan DeVille from the 1970s. And I'm sure you guys got to enjoy having a classic car on the channel once again. Hopefully we'll be uh, bringing more, more of that to you guys soon. Well, thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.